Hello everyone. Welcome to my third video on this on my research on the area of uh, free energy and perpetual motion. In the second P video, which I named uh, part 1B, it was this arrangement but are not completed the drive mechanism for lifting the the top weight at the top. So here I will show the entire arrangement. This system is supposed to work by the differences in the lever arm. As you can see, on the right hand side, the lever arms are extended. And on the left hand side, the lever arms are pointing towards the ground. It is these differences in the lever arm which creates the resultant moment which is supposed to make the system work. So from a mathematical model that I've developed in using trigonometry and also using Microsoft Excel to estimate the resultant moment, I have found out that the resultant moment is dependent on the number of weights used around the circumference of the wheel. Here, in this case, I have a total of 18 weights around the circumference. The wheel, as I said in the video number two, is made from a bicycle rim, which has an advantage of having a very low friction because it is made from the industry and it was rotating very freely, of course. So that was one advantage. And to make the wheel bigger, I, I attached plastic rulers around the circumference of the wheel, of the rim, so I have an overall diameter of 1.14 centimeters. No, 1. Point, no, 114 centimeters. So on each plastic ruler, I have also attached, I've attached weights which have a lever arm which is movable, which can be, which can rotate an angle of 180 degrees. So. This system uh, is supposed to work by just the mere difference in lever arm length. So the lifting mechanism for the top weight is composed of a belt. I've used here a rubber belt, which is running around the, the bicycle rim. And then I've also put here a pulley mechanism which is supposed to be rotated. As the rim rotates, then the pulley here on the top is supposed to rotate. And then on the pulley, I've attached a member, which has an L shape, so that as the pulley rotates, it is able to catch the next weight and lift it up so that on the right hand side, always the, the lever arms will be extended and always on the left hand side, the levers will be the levers will be dropping or pointing towards the ground. So, so from the mathematical model developed from trigonometry, as you increase the number of weights around the circumference, I found out that the resultant moment increases. So if you are to use only four weights around the circumference or even eight weights around the circumference, the mathematical model shows that the system will not work because the resultant moment is always lower than the energy required to lift the top weight. So, considering only the gravitational potential energy requirement for, for lifting the upper weight here, this one, since we have a distance of r here for the weight when the weight is pointing to the ground like this one so to lift it up so that it becomes extended the total height required to be lifted is 2r so you multiply that with mg and you can estimate the energy requirement for lifting the top weight to be 2mgr i have also considered the path the path required to lift the weight since the weight will not be lifted just straight from here to here but rather it will be rotated 
in an angle of 180 degrees for it to be lifted. So I've also used the trapezium rule to estimate the, the, to estimate the torque throughout the curve of 180 degrees because the torque varies. As you can imagine, when the weight is pointing towards ground like here, to move it initially, it requires very small torque to move it. But as it comes to an angle of around 90 degrees here, the torque is maximum and continues to decrease as you move towards the 180 degrees. So since the torque is in a curve form, from a lower value going up to a maximum value then going down then I use the trapezium rule to estimate the torque throughout the curve and then knowing that torque is a product of the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance I managed to estimate that the overall energy requirement to lift this to be 4 mgr but considering that this is a calculation I'm doing for the first time, I may have errored. So I request anyone who, is, who likes uh, doing calculations can confirm for themselves if the energy requirement of lifting a weight in that circular form is it for MGR or we can still stick to the 2 MGR which can be calculated from the requirement of the potential energy. But... Uh, the beauty about this system is because is, is that the, the, the resultant moment keeps increasing as you increase the amount of weights around the circumference. For example, I calculated the resultant weight for 16 weights. So if you have 16 weights around the circumference of, of the circle, you will have a resultant moment of 5 mgr m is the mass of the individual weights then uh, r r is the is the arm the lever arm length lever arm length and then g is the acceleration due to gravity or the gravitational acceleration so for 16 weights the resultant moment I estimated at 5 mgr. So if you double the number of weights around the circumference from 16 to 32, the resultant moment is estimated as 10 mgr, meaning doubling the weights, you double the resultant moment to 10 mgr. Doubling the weights again from 32 weights to 64 weights, the resultant moment now it becomes calculated as 20 mgr. So from the mathematical model, I have been able to see that if you double the number of weights around the circumference, you also double the resultant weight. The beauty about this is the parasitic loads for this system is one friction and friction is a very low energy requirement because like in this case, you are using a bearing. So the friction uh, for the rotating the wheel, the energy required to overcome friction is very, very low, actually compared to the energy required to lift the weight. The friction forces are contributing the lowest amount of energy that required to overcome it. The other energy requirement, the belt, which is driving the other pulley, of course, some energy will be lost in driving this pulley using the rim. So that is another parasitic load. The major load of the parasitic load now is the energy required to lift the top weight, this one. So as I said earlier, the energy required to lift this top weight, I estimated using the 180 degree distance or the curve where the weight follows, I estimated it at 4 mgr. Okay, now considering now, my estimation for 18 weights, remember, for this specific uh, system, I've used 18 weights. The 18 weights were guided by the to make sure the weights are equidistant. For the rim, I have some holes here. I can show. No, no, yeah. I have some holes where the spokes come into. 
these ores are a total of 30, 36. Yeah, a total of 36 box or 36 alls. So because I wanted to use to make sure the distance between the weights or between the rulers is equidistant, I I used the alls. Like I was keeping one all, I attach a ruler, I speak a, I skip another all, I attach a ruler, so that the weights are equidistant from each other around the circumference. So that's why I ended up using 18 weights instead of 16 weights. So I recalculated the, the resultant moment for 18 weights and the answer I got was 5.67 MGR. Now, considering that the resultant moment before uh, considering the parasitic loads is 5.67 MGR and the estimated energy required to lift the this this um, top weight here is 4 mgr you can see the difference between these two is very small 5.67 mgr and 4 4 mgr it's very mm -hmm. small and this can explain why my system now as it is it is not working as you can see you have uh, the extended lever arms all around at the right hand side and the dropping lever arms at the left hand side but when you look at the weight at the top, it is not straight. It has already been lifted a little bit by the resultant moment, as you can see. So what I've been able to see using this arrangement is that without, is that the, 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 the resultant moment is able to rotate the system and also drive the upper pulley if the weight is not lifting the weight is not included but when you include the weight it is not able to lift it completely but now the beauty about all this is because from the mathematical model it says if i use more weights rather than the 18 if i increase it to 36 or even include it to 32 from 32 to 64, I expect the resultant moment will be always being doubled. And the energy required to overcome or to lift this is relatively constant. It is, is relatively uh, constant, it's not changing. Uh, the frictional forces might increase a little bit because the overall weight of the system is increasing, but it will not be a major, major increase. Uh, also, the, the energy required to drive the system, the, the belt, and the pulley might increase slightly but not majorly so it means even as we continue increasing the um the, the number of weights around the circumference we would expect that this system can work but um as as is in in all research uh, this is just an idea which i'm following through and i want to take it to the end so i want to promise that uh, i'll continue with the research i would like to increase the number of weights from 18 to multiply by 2 comes to 36 weights i see how it behaves of course i have some uh, construction uh, challenges which i can show as you can see the belt is not vertical it is having some angle as it drives uh, the pulley these are challenges I'm facing because uh, I'm not able to 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 to, to create the the, the 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 system as I have designed it because of uh, a few challenges here and there. But uh, what I can promise, I'll continue with the research. And as I requested in the previous video, uh, anybody who has ideas which you can share with me, I'll appreciate. And also, I would also appreciate if I could get some also financial assistance to continue with my research. So for now, I reach there and I request you to, to subscribe to this channel so that we can do this research together. What I can promise is that uh, if this system were to work, it can change the world. Uh, but if I continue with this research and I'm not able to get a continuous motion or if the system does not work eventually, I promise to tell you 
saw that it has not worked and I can tell you exactly why it has not worked because I will have learned as I continue doing it. But I'm still very, very optimistic because uh, this system has demonstrated that the, the resultant moment is able to rotate the entire system without lifting the weight. It's also able to rotate the upper pulley. But when you incorporate the weight, it just does a partial lifting. Meaning if I get more resultant weight by resultant moment by increasing the number of weights or even increasing by increasing the wheel radius or, uh, or even increasing the arm length, there are a lot of parameters to change to get a bigger resultant moment. And as a bigger resultant moment is created, then I, I would expect this upper weight will be lifted and with the upper weight being lifted, you can be assured of a continuous motion. So I will try to show some movement. Uh, this system, of course, it is a little bit hard to do it on my own since I am, you, uh, you can see some movement there. Uh -huh. Yeah. So for now, I will reach there and then I'll continue. I'll do another video in future to show how far I've gone or what I've learned, what are the challenges. Thank you very much.